Sierra Doan and welcome to Christchurch Hillcrest online service. Just a reminder that we are having church in person and we would love to see you there soon. Please enjoy this wonderful service. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the wisdom of the leaders of our country. We ask you to continue to give them wisdom especially in dealing with the COVID and the outbreaks that are coming around. Please give the people patience and understanding of the new regulations. Please be with the people of our great country. There are so many people struggling with finances, relationships um, and many other things due to COVID and due to the circumstances they are in. Please give them, give them wisdom in dealing with their problems and give them guidance. Lord, we ask you to be with our church family. There are many struggling with health related issues, with relationships, with work and with finances. We ask you to put your arms around them and help them through this time and help us to see who we can help and how we can help. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask you that at these difficult times, you help us to be, give us the wisdom to be able to share your word with others. So many people are hurting at this time and help us to see those people and share your love with them. Lord, we ask you to be with the matrix and all the other students who are writing exams at this time. After a very stressful year, having to write exams is difficult. We ask you to give them wisdom and time to study and the opportunity to excel. We thank you, Lord, that we are able to plan events for Christmas season. It's such a special time of year. Lord, please be with all the people planning the events. May your name be glorified through this time. And may many, many people come to know you through the events that we plan for this time. Lord, we thank you for bringing us all through this year and just being with us and giving us the strength to do everything we need to do. For Lord, it is only through your strength that we get to do all these things every day. We thank you for your guidance and wisdom, and we ask you to be with us as we go forward into this special time of year. May we all remember what the reason for the season is. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Today's reading comes from Genesis 50, verse 15 to, 20, to 21. When Joseph's brother saw that his father was dead, they said, What does Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrongs we did to him? So they sent word to Joseph, saying, Your father left these instructions before he died. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers and sins they, and the wrongs they have committed in treating you so badly. Now please forgive the sins of the servants of God of your father. When their message came to him, Joseph wept. His brothers then came to him and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to them, Don't be afraid. I am in the place of am I in the place of God? You intend me to you intend to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done. The saving of many lives. So then, don't be afraid. I will provide you and your children. And he reassured them as he spoke kindly to them. That is the word of the Lord. Morning, church family. I trust that you're well and you're strong in the Lord. And can you believe it? This is the last week of November. Next week, we're in December. And that's Christmas time. I hope you're getting ready. And that in spite of all the challenges we face this year, that God will richly bless you, that you'll be able to enjoy Christmas with your loved one. And we're really looking forward to that time when we meet with our families. And I hope you'll be able to, for some of you who may need to travel, that you would do so safely. Won't you please just bow your heads and pray with me as we start. Father, it is your word we are studying. Would you please open the ears of our hearts? 
and help us to hear you speak to us clearly. That we may take the warnings from this passage, that we may learn the lesson of forgiveness from this passage, and above all, that we may learn to trust you based on what this passage is teaching, is teaching us this morning. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, have you ever found yourself in a situation where you felt completely out of control and at the mercy of other people or the situation? I remember hearing a story of a friend who was involved in an accident and he said it was so scary to feel the car spinning and he had absolutely no control and he felt he was at the mercy of the element as he puts it. I think this year the whole global community we kind of like felt something like that with the coronavirus. This virus it really it just spread and it was threatening everybody everywhere in the whole world. The virus shaken us and forced us into this realization that we are never in charge as much as we think we are. It struck each and every one of us and forced us into the hole as more countries began to enforce stringent lockdowns. I mean, here in South Africa, you know, when we were on lockdown level five, we were stuck within our four walls at, in our homes. The virus just seemed to be completely out of control and survival became a priority. The year 2020, I think it's the year many of us would like to forget and yet it is most likely to be year, a year we would never forget. It is the year we would remember for the virus. It is the year where too many things were out of our control. We hopelessly watched our plans falling apart. Got a new passport, you're going to travel, mm, it didn't do it. You wanted to start a new business, it didn't work. You wanted to visit family and friends, it didn't work. We just hopelessly watched as this virus um, forced us into our corners. Well, this morning we're looking at a story of Joseph from Genesis 50, verse 15 to 20. It is right at the end of the narrative. And when you look at this story of Joseph, it is a story of difficulty, a story where for many times Joseph felt completely out of control. Do you remember? He had the dream. And uh, his brothers didn't appreciate the dream. When his father got him that colored coat, it just didn't make things better with the family. His brothers hated him even more. And the whole family dynamics fell completely out of control when his brothers decided to kill him. So he comes to see them and they grab him and they throw him in a hole. And they sit there and they plan how to go about killing him. And they decided, no, let's not kill him. And they sold him into slavery. And Joseph's life was completely out of control. He couldn't force his brothers. He had no control over his brothers. And when he was sold, he became a slave. And other people had control of his life. His life as he knew it came to an abrupt end when his brothers sold him. And it wasn't long. The people who bought him sold him in Egypt. And you read Joseph's story. It is just a story of nothing but a tale of suffering and hardship. And not of Joseph's own doing. All these things were happening and he had no control over. However, we know 
that his gift of interpreting the dreams saved the day. He was afforded an opportunity to come and interpret Pharaoh's dream. And the interpretation was so convincing that Pharaoh literally made him the prime minister. He was in charge of all Egypt. The man's whole life was nothing but a spiral of out, out of control events. And God just simply placed him there as a man in charge, as it were. And we know from Joseph's story that the dream he interpreted, which was Pharaoh's dream, it came to pass. The impending threat of famine came true. And we know that many nations around Egypt began to move towards Egypt to buy grain. And that also included Joseph's brothers. And they went up to buy some grain. And it wasn't long. They found themselves at the mercy of their brother Joseph. And they remembered his dreams. They must have remembered his dreams. They must have realized that their plan to sell him into slavery had backfired big time. And by the time we get to this section, they were willing and happy to bow down before him and say to him, we are your servants. By this time, Joseph's father had died and his brothers began to worry. What if Joseph paid them back for what they did to him? You see, they understood the gravity of their sin. Even though Joseph had forgiven them, they couldn't forgive themselves. They couldn't forget what they did to their brother. And so they cooked the story and um, they tell Joseph that their father, Israel, had commanded them to tell Joseph to forgive their sin against him. So in other words, they sit together and they say, well, what must we do? Okay, we're going to tell Joseph that our father had commanded us to tell him that he must forgive us. Hey, it's like they haven't learned a thing. It is at this time where they should really be humble and accept the fact that they committed a heinous crime and that if God wants to punish them, then he will punish them. But they're still cooking up plans. And that's not my focus this morning. My focus this morning really is Joseph's response. And that is verse 19 and 20. When the message came that your father commanded us to tell you that you must forgive us. And this is what Joseph said. Do not fear. For am I in the place of God? Notice that? It is a question. Do not fear. And there's a question. For am I in the place of God? What Joseph is really saying to his brothers here is that I am not God. What you did to me is between you and God. It is God and God alone who deals with sin. And God will do that which he see fit with you. But do not worry about my power and my authority here. I'm not going to hurt you. And then he continues, verse 21. He says, As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. To bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. And Joseph says, all the things that have happened to me, they happened because God was going to bring about good. Yes, along the way, 
people did really bad things to me. Do you remember, he ended up in prison and he was accused of rape, a crime he didn't commit thanks to Mrs. Potiphar's heart. And yet God kept him safe there. And he says to his brothers, yes, you sold me. And you didn't want to see me. You wanted me dead. But God meant it for good. You see, it is so important to understand Joseph's understanding of God. Because it is at this time of the passage where you kind of like, wow, Joseph, really? Can you say that? After all the pain and the suffering that you've gone through, to be able to say that? Yes. Joseph understood and believed that even though he was not in control of the situation, God was in total control of it. It was God who allowed him to go through that. It was God who protected him all the way. It was God who alleviated him to the position that he was now enjoying in Egypt. It was God who was guiding him as he governed with justice and integrity. Joseph sees the hand of God in all of the things that were happening in his life. In other words, Joseph, if we understand this passage correctly, Joseph was God's appointed instrument for saving his family from hunger in the land of Canaan. And he used him to relocate them to a prosperous land in Egypt and had even prepared a place for them there. It is an amazing thing when you see that. It's God who had put all this so that he could save his brothers, the very brothers who wanted him dead. But not only his brothers or his family, that through Joseph's gifts of interpreting the dream, many, many people will be saved from hunger. Isn't encouraging, my brothers and sisters in Christ, to know that God is in control? Is it encouraging to know that even in bad situation, our God is still in control? We serve a God who is able to turn even that which is meant for evil and turn it to bring about good. Our God is sovereign over everything, including the sinful actions of others. So in other words, Joseph is not minimizing the pain or saying to them, ah, oh, you know what, guys, you just made a mistake, but hey, boys be, will always be boys. No. They committed sin, and God will deal with but at the same time, Joseph wants us to understand that no matter how bad the situation may be, it is never out of God's control. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that encouraging? And I don't know what you are going through. I don't know your present personal circumstance. But this I know from this passage. That through it all, you would never walk alone. And you, that situation which may seem to be completely out of control in your life, it is perfectly within God's control. His brothers meant for evil. Meant evil against him. But God meant it for good. Yet at the same time, when you read this story and you read it in the light of the New Testament, you can clearly see that Joseph's story is a shadow of Jesus' story. Do you remember how Peter presented his argument in Acts chapter 2 from verse 23 and 24? He says, 
This Jesus was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge. And you, with the help of the wicked man, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. You see, what Peter is saying to his people is that they intended to destroy Jesus and God's plan. But God meant it for good. God raised Jesus from the dead and his death and resurrection has brought millions of sons and daughters into glory. When he hung on the cross, the evil men thought they had finished with him. And yet in doing so, they brought about God's plan and purposes. It is through the cross that we are saved. And that's what Joseph is saying to his brothers. And that's what Peter is saying about Jesus. And we can look back and say, Thanks be to God for great things he has done. The death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ means salvation for you and for me. And that salvation continues to be available even today. They wanted to frustrate God's plan. And yet in doing so, they actually brought about God's plan. And think about it for a moment. Think with me. If you find yourself in a very difficult situation right now, you need to be sure of this, that God will turn it around for good. No matter what your situation may be, you might really say, no, Jomo, you don't understand. I lost my job. I have bills to pay. I have school fees to pay. There's so much that I stand to lose because I lost my job. You don't understand. And I want you to hear this. That God will turn it around for good. Maybe through your struggle, one person may come to faith just by walking with you and see the way you respond to your personal situation. Maybe many people, as they watch you through your struggle, would begin to think about the grace of God and the goodness of God. You see, your situation is may seem out of control, but it is perfectly within God's control. In other words, through your difficult situation, God will bring about his purposes. Through your personal struggle, God will bring about his purposes. And that's what really Paul meant in Romans eight twenty eight when he said, we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purposes. A God, in all things, all really include your present personal situation, that God worked for the good. Your situation, while it may seem to be completely out of control, but in actual fact, it is moving slowly but surely towards its God-appointed purpose. God is in control. My brothers and sisters in Christ, your situation may be dire, but you must not lose hope because God is in control. It may not turn out the way you would prefer. It may not turn out the way you plan it. It may not turn out the way you want it. But it will always turn out the way God designed it. Through your situation, 
God will bring about his purposes. Am I minimizing your suffering? No. Am I saying it is God who plotted for that to happen? No. But God is allowing you to go through that so that he will bring about his purposes right at the end. Joseph's brothers, they committed sin. And we know that God deals with sin in two ways. The first one is that God forgives repented sinners. So his brothers, they repent of their sin, God would forgive them. And that's why Joseph says, that's not for me to decide because that belongs to God. The second way God deals with sin is that he condemns unrepented sinners. So yes, maybe it's not that you find yourself in a bad situation, but that maybe you cause someone else's downfall. The Bible says, while you meant for evil, God would use it for the other person's good and for the kingdom. And yet he will not let you go without having to face your sins. Remember how Moses puts it in Leviticus 33? He says, if you fail to do this, in other words, if you fail to obey the Lord and help your brothers, because that's what God had commanded his people. And Moses said, if you fail to do this, you will be sinning against God. And you, you may be sure of this, that your sin will find you out. You can run, but you can't hide. You see, your sin is like your shadow. You can never outrun it. And so if you are the one who really is acting like Joseph's brothers, you need to repent of your sin and come to God and ask for mercy. And if you find yourself in a situation that is so dire, you must remember, God is in control. Lift up your eyes to him. Commit your present situation to him and trust him. He will guide you through it. Yes, the story of Joseph ended up not in a way that Joseph ever dreamt of. Humanly speaking. But we remember that in Genesis 37, God had already given him the dream. He saw his brothers and his mom and his dad bowing down before him, and they did. I don't know how your story would end. But this I know. God is in control of it. And because he is, you can face the future. Take heart and take courage and press on. Let's pray together. Father, we know from Scripture that our present suffering are not worth comparing to the glory that awaits us. And yet our present suffering often consumes us. So I pray for each and every one of us, everyone who's listening, everyone who's watching, Lord, you know their situation, you know their fears, you know their concerns. Lord, I pray that you will help them to find trust and comfort in you. And that you would walk with them, even if they walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that they may not be afraid, for you are with them. Help them, help us to learn to trust you. In the areas of finance, family, health, and all areas that we deem to be important in our lives, help us to learn to trust you with this. In Jesus' name. Amen.